This charger is rated for 200 watts AC, 650 watts DC, and 15 amps. And the big question that some people watching this aren't gonna be able to answer is, is that enough? Is it too much? Is it not enough? I just wanna charge a freaking battery. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. Here's what makes evaluating LiPo charger specifications so confusing. On the one hand, all you wanna do is charge your battery. And most batteries aren't actually safe to charge very fast. If you charge them too fast, then they puff up, light on fire, maybe burn your house down. So most chargers are too big. They're bigger than you need, they can charge your battery as safe as is fast, and you're just paying for extra capacity that you don't really want. But there are a whole bunch of things that can cause a charger to bottleneck its capacity. And when you hit one of those bottlenecks, suddenly you can't charge any faster. What I'm gonna show you in this video is a tool that lets you input your battery information, input your charger specifications, and then it's gonna tell you which, if any, of the bottlenecks in your charger's performance is causing your battery to not charge as fast as you want. Or it's gonna tell you, you're good to go. You can charge the battery as fast as you want, and you don't need to think about getting a bigger battery or a bigger power supply. So here's the spreadsheet that's gonna help answer the question, how big of a charger do you need to charge your battery? This is a Google spreadsheet. There's a link in the video description to where you can see it. The link takes you to a read-only copy that you cannot edit, and then you're gonna to need to hit file make a copy to make a local copy on your Google account that you can edit. Uh, and the first thing we're gonna do with this sheet is we're gonna input information about our battery. I've got these cells marked in yellow. These are the cells that you're gonna modify and you're gonna input information about your charger and your battery. So let's say that I wanna charge a, uh, this is a 1500 milliamp hour 4S. So we're gonna put in 1500 and four cell. Uh, if our battery is a LiPo battery, then our max cell voltage is going to be 4.2 volts. If we were doing some other kind of battery, then we would put the maximum voltage for that cell chemistry in this cell. And based on that, the spreadsheet is going to calculate the max voltage of the battery, 16.8 volts. Next, we're going to need to tell the spreadsheet the watt and amp rating of our charger. And we're going to go over to the product page for our charger and look that up. But there is a catch here. If your charger has a built-in power supply, like the Hoda S6 or this Hoda D6 Duo, it's gonna have separate watt ratings depending on whether you're using the built-in power supply, in other words, if you're plugged into the wall, versus using an external power supply via the DC input. Usually, the built-in power supply is gonna be smaller in capacity than the charger is actually capable of doing. And so if we scroll down here, what we'll see is that when using the built-in AC power supply, in other words, if you're plugged into the wall, our output limit is 400 watts, and that is 400 watts across the whole charger. So this is a two-channel charger. It can charge two batteries at a time. That 400 watts is gonna be divided between them. So if we were planning to charge two batteries at a time, we would put in 200 watts as our maximum output limit. If we were charging one battery at a time, we could put in 400 watts. However, we can see here that if we're using a DC input, if we've got an external power supply, like you can see there's one behind me on the, on the bench there, then the limit would be 325 watts per channel, and we would put in 325 watts. So let's assume that we're working with the Hoda S6, and let's assume that we're gonna be charging one battery, and so we are gonna put in 400 watts as the maximum watt rating of this charger. What about the amp rating? We can see here that it's listed as 15 amps, and if we scroll down and just double check, we can see here the charge current is 15 amps times two channels. So that's 15 amps per channel. And we don't see any indication that that changes depending on whether we're using AC or DC. So we can assume that we can max out at 15 amps uh, on this one channel charge. So we'll put in 15 amps here. And that is generally the case. Usually a charger's amp rating is gonna be the same regardless of how you power it. And usually the amp rating is per channel. The watt rating is a little bit more iffy. Sometimes the watt rating is per channel, sometimes it's for the charger as a whole and is split between the channels. And the watt rating is usually not the same depending on whether you're using an internal power supply or an external one. And you really just gotta look at the specs and try and infer what they mean uh, to see how that sort of falls out. 
Next, we're going to put in information about our power supply. And if you are using a built-in power supply of a unit like the Hoda D6 or the Hoda S6, then you can actually skip this section of the spreadsheet. And the reason for that is if the manufacturer has designed the charger with a built-in power supply, then if the manufacturer says the charger can do 400 watts, that's what it can do. That's how they designed it. So the purpose of the power supply section is to know whether your power supply is the bottleneck and is limiting the performance of your system. But when you've got a built-in power supply, that's not the case. The built-in power supply is, is baked into the ratings, if you will. So in this case, we would simply ignore this section, uh, but let's pretend that we're using an external power supply. So here we've got a Race Day Quads power supply, 400 watts, 16.7 amps, 24 volts. Uh, we're going to take that, so those specs. We need the watt rating and the voltage rating. The amp rating doesn't really matter in this case. And we're going to put those in here. So we've got a 24 volt power supply and we've got a watt rating of 400 watts. Next, the spreadsheet asks for the input amp rating of the charger. And unfortunately, this is not always given in every charger's specs. The charger, the 15 amps that you see here on the front of the charger, that is the output amp rating. That is how many amps it can push into the battery. There is also an input amp rating, which is how many amps it can suck in through this XT60 that it's taking power in from. I can't find that specification for the Hoda S6, but just by way of example, I've pulled up a manual for the Toolkit RC M6D charger. And if we go all the way to the very end to the specifications page, you can see here for input, it says 728 volts at max 30 amps. That's the kind of thing that we would be looking for to fill this in. Now, if you don't know the answer, then part of this spreadsheet is just gonna to have to be ignored. Uh, we may not be able to know whether the power supply is limiting our performance, but we're just gonna put in 30 amps here for the time being, and we're gonna proceed by way of example. Finally, we need to put in the efficiency rating of the power supply. This is also a specification you may not know the answer. Uh, I put 85% as the default. High quality power supplies are gonna be even higher. Poor power supplies may be worse. You may wish to lower that number if you wanna be sure that your power supply is big enough to not limit your performance, but this is a reasonable default value. And the first section asks the question, if you had a power supply that was rated for more watts, could you charge your battery faster? Based on these assumptions, we would need an 847 watt power supply to max out the input rating on the charger. The maximum amps we could charge at based on our power supply watt rating is 20 amps. And based on our battery's milliamp hour, this would be a C rate of 13.5 C. This is the key thing here. With a C rate of 13.5 C as our battery's max possible charge rate, that's preposterously fast. It's dangerously fast. A good rule of thumb is to charge at one C. Some people charge at two or three C. And I would say that anything above 5C is just reckless and not, not really responsible under any circumstances. In other words, our power supply is not limiting the fastest safe charge rate of our charging setup. Next, we ask the question of whether we would be able to charge faster with a higher voltage power supply. In other words, if we have a 12 volt power supply, could we charge faster based on uh, going up to a 19 volt or a 24 volt power supply. One caveat here is that your charger has to be rated for that input voltage. So if your charger is rated for 19 volts input, you wouldn't be able to use like a 24 volt power supply. That's too high of a voltage and it would just fry. Um, if you did not get the input amp rating from your charger specifications, you have to just ignore this. You just can't know whether this is the situation. In that case, the best thing you could do is use the highest voltage power supply that is reasonable for you to get. But the thing is, you may already be maxing out your battery, in which case this isn't what's holding you back. Assuming that we were able to get this input amp rating from our charger specs, the way this section works is, it uses that to calculate the maximum output watts you could charge at and the amps that that would cor correlate to and the C rate that that would correlate to. And again, we're gonna ask ourselves, can we charge the battery at at least 
1 to 3C or maybe 5C if you're really in a hurry, but certainly no faster than that. And we can see that based on this setup, we would charge at a C rate of 24C, which is far faster than we need to do. In other words, our power supply is fine. Now that we know our power supply is fine, we start looking at the charger's rating. Based on the charger's watt rating, the maximum amps we could charge at is 23.8 amps, which corresponds to a charge rate of 15.9C. In other words, far more than the 1 to 3 or maybe 5C that we would consider doing. And taking into account all possible limitations, the fastest this charger could charge the battery is 15 amps. So based on the watt rating, the charger could charge at 23 amps, but the, the charger also has an amp rating which limits it to 15 amps. It's whichever uh, limit we hit first. Taking into account all possible limitations, the fastest we could charge the battery is 15 amps, which would be a C rate of 10 C, and the battery would finish charging in approximately six minutes. However, we wouldn't want to charge at 10 C because that would be unsafe. What we're learning from all of this is that this current setup, the limiting factor, and how fast we can charge this battery is not our power supply, and it's not our charger, it's our battery. So what if we were using like a larger battery? What if we were doing parallel charging and we were charging six batteries at a time? So instead of 1500 milliamp hour, it was six times 1500 or 9000 milliamp hours. That's how parallel charging works. You add up the milliamp hours. If we go back down, let's check our assumptions. Is the power supply watt rating limiting our maximum possible charge rate? No, our power supply is plenty big enough to charge these batteries as fast as is safe. However, notice that now we are down to a C rate of 2.2 C, which still pretty reasonable, but it's starting to get to the point where if we had larger batteries, maybe we would getting, be getting down close to or even below a 1 C charge rate, and we would start thinking maybe we might like to have a bigger power supply. The other thing is that we might not want to run the power supply like absolutely at the, at the limit of its performance, but for the time being, we're good to go. We can charge at 2.2C, that's plenty. What about the charger's input amp limit? Could we benefit from a higher voltage power supply? No, we could charge at 4C based on this specification. Interestingly, what would happen if we went down to a 12 volt power supply instead of a 24 volt? Now notice that the input amp limit is limiting how fast we can charge and it's saying that we could benefit from charging faster with a higher voltage PSU. Based on the charger's watt rating, the maximum amps we could charge at is 2.6C, which is still plenty. And taking into account all possible limitations, the fastest this charger could charge is still 15 amps. That 15 amps is still the main thing that's limiting the speed at which we can charge, which would be a charge rate of 1.7C, and we would finish charging in about 36 minutes. In other words, what we're learning from this situation is that that Hoda S6 is fine. It is more than enough to charge all of the batteries that we could possibly want to charge under the assumptions of this video. In fact, you could ask the question, ah, the Hoda S6, is the built-in power supply big enough? It can do 400 uh, watts with this built-in supply, but it can do 600 watts with an external supply. Should I get an external power supply? Should I get a different charger? Do I need a big 3,000 watt uh, power supply like Bardwell has on the shelf behind him? And the answer to that question is no. Based on the assumptions about what batteries you're charging, this charger is fine. Let's do one more example with a much, much smaller charger and let's see a case where maybe it is limiting us. The example we've been working on so far has been with a great big honking expensive charger that could pretty much do, it's not a surprise that it can do whatever you want it to do. I want to run another example with a much smaller charger, the ISDT608AC. And you may be surprised how capable this thing turns out to be depending on what battery you want to charge it with. But before we get to that, I want to take one minute and tell you about my Patreon. Patreon is a website where you can support me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it, the amount that you subscribe at is totally up to you. If you value the kind of content that I make here and you wanna help make sure that I get to keep making it, head down to the video description. There's a link down below to patreon.com and sign up. I sure do appreciate it. If today's the day that I earned your support, fantastic. And if I haven't earned it yet, I hope you'll keep watching content. I'm gonna keep making the content and maybe that day will come. 
Here is the ISDT 608 AC. It does have a built-in 50 watt power supply uh, and it can be run from DC, an external power supply up to 200 watts and eight amps. Let's fill, it, fill in the information from this charger into our spreadsheet. First, let's go back to the example where we have a single 1500 milliamp hour four cell. The watt rating is 50 watts. The amp rating is eight amps. For the power supply, we're simply gonna ignore this section because we're using the built-in power supply of the system. We know it's rated for 50 watts and we don't need to worry about the output voltage or the input amp limit when we're using an internal power supply. Now, since we're using the internal power supply on the 608AC, we will simply ignore this section and we will ignore these two conclusion sections since they pertain to the power supply. We just have to assume that the power supply is sized appropriate to meet the output uh, watts of 50 watts. Based on the charger's watt rating, we can charge at a charge rate of 2C, which is plenty, and taking into account all possible limitations, the fastest this charger could charge is 2.5 amps, which is a C rate of 1.7C or 36 minutes. Again, perfectly reasonable. So what that tells us is this is a fine charger if all you want to do is charge a 1500 milliamp hour 4S battery. But if we wanted to charge like you know, five or six of them in parallel, this would begin to show its limitation. Now, before we close out this video, I've got to say that this is only the beginning of choosing a LiPo charger. The very first question you've got to ask is, can it charge the batteries that I want to charge in the amount of time that I feel like it is safe and reasonable to charge them in? But I think what you're going to see after going through this video is that many chargers are dramatically oversized for what we're actually asking them to do. And there's nothing wrong with that because there's other things that come into play when deciding on a charger that you want to use. For example, this uh, D6 Duo has non-contact charging. You can set your cell phone on top of it. And if your phone has non-contact charging, it'll start charging your phone. It's got a USB power supply. The Hoda S6 has 100 watt USB PD. USB power delivery. There are other things you'll look for, like convenience factors and accessories and so forth that go into choosing a charger. Uh, but if the charger can't charge the batteries you wanna charge, then it's pretty much off the list. And that's the point of this spreadsheet. There is a link in the video description, as I said before, to the spreadsheet, and I hope you will use it. I hope you pass it around. In the meantime, if you are looking for a charger, this is my favorite charger and has been for years. And I want to uh, show you the review I did when it first came out so you could get an idea of why I think it's so great. I think it stands up even today. Money for specs and sure, sure as heck durability. I've been carrying these. I've owned like four of these and I've been carrying them around. The only one I've broken has been a broken screen, which is hardly its fault. There's a card on screen. If you want to check that out, I'll see you over there. Happy flying.